Linux Mint is one of the most accessible, simplest Linux distros around and actually originates from Ubuntu, which remains the most popular Linux distro. There are big differences between these two Linux Leviathans and we're going to compare them to help you decide which one to use. Hi, this is Phil from Easier, and this is Ubuntu versus Linux Mint, which is better. Linux Mint, while based on Ubuntu, has a different approach than Ubuntu for creating a Linux distribution. Ubuntu makes use of GNOME 3 and tries to keep everything vanilla, while Linux Mint's developers take all things they don't like about Ubuntu and simplify it to make it easier for end users. If you're wondering which one is better, join me to find out how they differ and which one's best for you. Whenever Linux Mint is mentioned in this article, it's referring to the Cinnamon Edition and for Ubuntu, it's referring to the plain vanilla 2004 version. System Requirements One of the significant differences between the latest Ubuntu and Mint versions is their system requirements. Ubuntu has a habit of adding new and more features and it has become heavier and more demanding over the years than Mint. You probably won't be able to tell the difference in a relatively modern computer. Owners of older PCs, however, would probably be better off with Mint. Installation both Ubuntu and Mint use the Ubiquiti installer, making their installations almost identical. Also to install Ubuntu, you can use the ZFS file system that's unsupported by Mint. Mint seems more open source friendly in that you can choose to install additional codecs for your media. Those, as far as we know, are installed by default with Ubuntu. Kernel while Ubuntu 20.04 and Linux Mint 20 share the same 5.4 kernel base, not all features are the same for both distros. For example, Canonical has backported WireGuard to the 5.4 kernel, a feature lacking in Mint's latest version. Similarly, although Mint's kernel should theoretically support ZFS, that functionality isn't exposed to the end user. ZFS Canonical's ZSys tool allows everyone to use one of the best features of ZFS by taking file system snapshots automatically. If you meet a problem while using your OS, it's highly probable you'll be able to revert it to a previously working state. Linux Mint doesn't support ZFS, so there are no automatic snapshots here. Mint comes with its own backup tool and it works great, but backups are no equivalent for file system level snapshots. WireGuard WireGuard is considered the best option for VPNs today and even has received praise from Linus Torvalds himself. Canonical has added support for WireGuard to Ubuntu's 2004 kernel, but Mint's kernel seems to have skipped it. This doesn't mean that you can't use WireGuard on Mint, only that it isn't included in its version of the 5.4 kernel. Live Patch LivePatch is one of Ubuntu's latest features, although not entirely new. It's a new updating mechanism which promises to render obsolete the need for restarts after every single system update. Unless you're keeping your PC on 24 hours a day, like running a Linux server, then the Live Patch is useful. Unlike Windows, Linux update doesn't require you to restart your computer immediately, and it doesn't restart on its own. Desktop Ubuntu uses the latest version of GNOME, while Linux Mint uses Cinnamon. Both GNOME and Cinnamon are customizable, but GNOME requires you to install additional extensions, while Cinnamon customization options come right out of the box. Right after installing Mint with Cinnamon, the first window you meet allows you to tweak the main bar setup between a modern and classic configuration. You can change color accents, install new themes, and even have your wallpaper changing automatically, all with just a few clicks. Mint's approach feels much more user-friendly all around, but its collection of customization options is minuscule compared to Ubuntu's. Software Linux Mint comes with a somewhat larger app selection. Among them you can find Warpinator, a new take on an old tool known as Giver. Warpinator works like Mac's more popular AirDrop, enabling devices in a local network to exchange files quickly and simply. Both distributions come with the expected Firefox, LibreOffice and different utilities for multimedia file manager, email, etc. Lint's software manager has the upper hand since it's blazingly fast compared to Ubuntu's software center. 
That's where you may also notice a crucial difference between the two distributions. Mint doesn't support snaps by default. Like many other open source advocates, Mint's developers don't like how Canonical practically controls the snap format. I won't take any sides in this issue, but I can say that they present valid points for their point of view. Real world performance. On a relatively new PC, both Ubuntu and Mint perform similarly. As the specs go down, Mint's desktop starts feeling a little snappier. To test their hunger for resources, I set up two identical virtual machines. I restricted the hardware to only 2GB of RAM and two CPU cores. After a clean boot, Ubuntu was using 1.4GB of RAM and 618MB of swap. Mint was using 641 megabytes of RAM and 307 megabytes of swap. It's also worth noting that Ubuntu took significantly longer to start up and become usable. Which is the best? On an old PC, Mint is the clear winner. On better, more modern PCs, the choice is not quite as clear. Both offer different experiences and your choice depends, for the most part, on your desktop preferences. If you prefer simplicity and quick, easy customization of the desktop, including the overall look and feel of the desktop, Linux Mint or Cinnamon is the better choice for you. If you prefer the GNOME 3 approach of a simplified desktop that's not as easy to customize, or you perhaps need ZFS, then Ubuntu is a better choice for you. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.